Hi, I'm Joe Bernard, the TrueRevelation.com. The choice to play citizenship with a government that is opposed to Christ is the inevitable circumstance that all of God's people will be faced with at some point in the near future. All of God's people want to be able to feed their families, get in out of the cold, and provide for themselves. But if you have to deny Christ to do it, is it worth it? Consider Israel and the first century church. They were immature spiritually compared to the church of our generation. Yet, God allowed their faith to be tested in the face of a world system, even to the point that they were tortured to death. But are we ready to be tested? We are nearly 2,000 years after Christ. We have the New Testament, which should intensify our spiritual maturity above and beyond that of the Old Testament. We have the Old and New Testament consolidated into one book, and we also have every modern te technology to study God's Word. This generation should be by far the most spiritually mature pe people of God that have ever walked the face of the whole earth. How much more will God allow our faith to be tested in the face of a world system that is opposed to Christ? And if the prophecy of God is as good as the promise of God, we have been promised that a literal one world government system will evolve. It will be perfect in its ability to lead and control the world. And like, a, like an animal that has horns to fight with, its military will be a perfect ten in its ability to make war against all the kingdoms of the world and the kingdom of God. This first world system uh, in time, one world system, will be destroyed and an interim world system will share in power for a short time. Then a second in time, one world government system will evolve, which like the first will cause all the people of the world to comply in citizenship and be identified with and by the system or face certain death. After which, and in a time which cannot be calculated or foreseen by anything written in the Word of God, Christ will come, dead saints will rise, and those that are alive will be caught up to meet Christ in the air at which time the second end-time world system will be destroyed and the great fierce world leader of it, Satan in the flesh, will be imprisoned and Christ will reign. Now, <clears throat> that is the good news. The bad news is that before Christ comes, a time of great tribulation will come on this great world ru ruler and the second end-time world system. This tribulation will be so severe like none ever before or after. But it will be shortened for the sake of the elect, which uh, is confirmed, clearly confirms that God's people will be on the earth at that time. But they are promised of God his protection during the tribulation. But those that shine like the sun will be very darkened by all of these events. And those that shine like the moon will almost have no light left in them. And those that shine like the, sun, like the stars will fall. Jesus said when the tribulation ends, the people of God of the same generation will see Christ coming in the clouds and he will gather his people from the, uh, um, throughout the world. Now, how do most Christians uh, respond to this message? Most Christians are oblivious to prophecy. Um, many still believe in the idea of a rapture, which is the idea that God's people are going to be caught up with Christ before their faith ever has a chance to be tested or before the Great Tribulation. Which is basically to say that the, the, the people that were of history that were the most immature people of God would, are the ones that would have to fight on the front lines and be slaughtered to pieces while those of the most spiritually mature people that have ever walked the face of the earth are permitted to basically be missing in action. Or at least that is the idea. <clears throat> Reason should prevail. Why would God's word show that they are protected through the tribulation, Christians, God's people, if they are not there for it? And we know that Christ says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, Christ will be seen coming in the clouds, and he will gather his elect, 
from the four winds, or that is from throughout the world. We also know that the second end time world system of that great fierce world leader, Satan in the flesh, will be destroyed at Christ's coming. Which means those that think that they're going to be caught up with Christ before oh, the first world system are in for a rude awakening. And to tell God's people that they will not have to endure these things, these events, is to remove them from a crucial readiness of mind that they will need to, um, to make the right decision not to be a citizen of an antichrist world system. Now, of all that should be concerned, the pastor should be most concerned uh, uh, concerning or by the idea of a one world system that opposes Christ that seeks to disenfranchise all those that are not a part of it. And in fact, uh, placing citizenship will be the only way that anyone can work a job or function in the system. Uh, but the citizen, by virtue of your citizenship here, you will be uh, declaring your allegiance or your faithfulness, loyalty, obligation to the world system that is opposed to Christ. Much in the same way that those that adjoin a church are declaring their allegiance to Christ. Now, Paul associates a falling away with not only the coming of Christ, but also the appearing of that great man of sin. The falling away then is strictly associated with the end time events. That is, God's people that have received the seed into the shallow ground that really don't love Him, God is going to allow them to be deceived, and especially in the end times. And here is how they will fall. Uh, the prevailing ideas in Christian thought for our day and time will cause many millions, if not billions of Christians to fall away in a uh, citizenship to a world system that is opposed to Christ. Well, what are the prevailing ideas? Many Christians believe that uh, if they, once they become a Christian, it is impossible to lose their salvation so long as they are showing that they love Christ in some way. But Christ reveals that those that, that say that they love Him in their deeds on one hand, but show that they are lying in their deeds on the other hand, are neither cold or hot, they will be spewed out of His mouth and blotted out of the Lamb's book of life, and ordered to depart from Him uh, as if He never knew them. Why? Because they were taking the, the blood of Christ that sanctified them. They are God's people that sanctified them and stomping it into the ground by their continued willful sin and disobedience. Prevailing ideal number two. Many Christians believe that God is talking to them in their thoughts or their dreams or some way uh, under tremendous pressure to feed their families, to, uh, to provide when they're suffering unbearably. Uh, many millions, even billions of Christians will believe that God is telling them to comply in citizenship with a one world government system that is opposed to Christ. As if God is, uh, has some secret uh, unspoken mission for them over there with the Antichrist. It is the purpose of this ministry to raise the awareness of God's people worldwide to an understanding that they must not under any circumstances comply or agree to anything that opposes Christ. And if in so doing, they are opposing Christ by statement of their actions. Now, for the most important part of this entire video presentation, I'd like to put up a paragraph and ask you to take a moment to please pause and read concerning God's judgment on Christians that influence other Christians to fall away and fall from Christ. And I will return with a final word. Thank you. This video is also an appeal unto the pastors and the assistant pastors for one dollar a month as a contribution for this ministry to move it into the future. Anyone can give. You will not be asked to increase that contribution. We are dependent on everyone participating and everyone sending this email 
to at least one other pastor either in your country or in another country. Please don't wait. Please take a step of faith. Make the contribution. Let your heart follow. Please don't leave it up to someone else. We need you now. We want to move this ministry into the future as uh, doing seminars from city to city, hiring evangelists, and eventually going worldwide. Now, the, the battle is won in the preparation. We want you to understand that we can only do so much. You have to teach your people. This is your moment. This is your time. This, if you have to rise to the occasion, ra'akum, uh, you have to seize the moment. And I want to ask that you would look at the next video and see how you can make the difference in the kingdom of God and millions of lives. Thank you.